So this is role-based permissions with convex auth in its entirety. Okay, let's do this. We're gonna start with the docs. I'm gonna start by creating a new convex project. We're gonna go call it crazy auth. Um, Vite is fine. We'll do convex auth as the auth provider. Now it's going to ask us for a few little bits of information. So by default, convex auth uh, sets up GitHub authentication for which we need a, a GitHub OAuth app. So if you log into GitHub, go down to settings and then developer settings and then OAuth apps. Now we'll be able to run um, our, app, our app through GitHub Auth. Convex Auth also supports any of the Auth0 providers um, of which there are uh, many. And so let's just do this for now. You can fill this in. Callback URL. So we're gonna get this in a second. So let's do this. Let's go crazy auth npm run dev. Now, the first time we run this, it's going to ask us a few questions about how we would like to set it up. So let's just create a new one. We'll go convex. Uh, yeah, crazy auth sounds good. Now it's going to ask us a few, uh, for a few bits of information specifically related to auth. And so in this case, because we're going to set it up through GitHub, um, it's going to provide us with the authorization callback URL. And that's going to call the correct convex function that makes everything work lovely. Okay, so now we've created uh, some uh, private key and a public key. We've uh, automatically modified all of the files that we need to set up. Do we want to configure GitHub OAuth? Yes. Here's the callback that we want to use. We'll just paste that right in there and you'll see this is my new convex deployment. This is the um, API or HTTP action that has been set up on our behalf and is designed to work seamlessly with GitHub and any other Auth0 setup that we would like. So let's go ahead and save this, register this application. I'm going to copy the client ID and we're going to have to provide it with a secret. Oh, TFA. Okay, here's our secret. I'm gonna paste that in there. Do I wanna configure resend? Resend is a very cool emailing platform, but we don't need it today. If you were to do login um, and auth with um, magic links, or we do that through resend. Okay, now I can log in through GitHub. Crazy Auth by Tom Redman, very cool, authorize. Now we go back and I am logged in. That's auth. What did we do that in, five minutes? Okay, now that we have auth working, we can sign in with GitHub. Let's make it a little bit more useful by implementing some role-based permissions. So to do that, the first thing that we're going to do is in addition to the auth tables that we have included in our schema, we're gonna override the default users table that comes from auth tables with um, all the fields that we, we get by default, but we also are going to add an additional field. Uh, and this one is gonna be called role, and it has to be optional um, because uh, the only required fields that you're able to add are fields that are returned by every OAuth provider that you support. Um, so we make this optional here, but we will ensure that when a user is created, they are given a default role. Um, and so what we do here is add the users as a new table. We add these fields uh, and with the validators, and then we add our new field, which is called role. And that's all we have to do here. Over in auth.ts, 
what we're going to do is add a new callback. And there is a callback in convex auth called after user created or updated. So this gets called after the user is created or updated. Uh, there is another callback called user created or updated. If you use that one, you are responsible for inserting the new user into the database. Um, I'm happy to let convex auth handle that. And so what we're going to do is let convex auth create the user. And then immediately afterwards, we're going to apply a default role to that user and that uh, we'll make the default role read. I have these roles defined in a new file called permissions. In addition, we'll create a new mutation just so that you can experiment with how these permissions are going to work in the application. So we've created a new mutation called update role that allows uh, anybody to update their, their own role. Again, this is just for, for testing and just to uh, illustrate how these work. So a new user is authenticated through OAuth. The user document is created in convex by way of convex auth library. And then this callback is called, uh, at which point we apply the role to that new user. You can see here, if this is a new sign in, we're just going to skip this part because we only want to apply this the first time the user signs up and becomes a brand new user in our application. So the way that I've got these permissions set up is through this new file called permissions.ts where I define the roles. In this case, we'll use a simple role hierarchy, which means that every additional permission is a superset of the permission below it. So admins can write and read. Uh, those with the write permission can write and read, and those with the read permission can only read. We have a new function called check permission. This is what we're going to use in our queries and our actions and our mutations to make sure that the user is authorized to take that action or make that write or query. And so this is uh, this is very, very simple. We pass in the user ID of the user that's making the request. We give it the required role for that particular action. And then we simply compare the user's role against the required role. I have this additional check to see if the role exists on the user because we had to make the role optional in order to work smoothly with convex auth and OAuth providers. It is theoretically possible that a user object would not have a role in the database. Shouldn't happen, but this is an additional check uh, to make sure that it does. A better way to do this would be probably to check for this role and throw an error because it's indicative of a bug. And that bug might be that this didn't get called or that we did something wrong in here at the beginning. But let's assume that uh, convex auth works as documented. And for now, we can just add this quick safety check, no problem. Okay, so now let's apply these permissions to different actions that a user might be able to take. Within our messages functions, we have the ability to list the messages, to send a message, and I've created a new function called delete message. So these I've created um, such that only users with certain permissions are able to take each action. And so for viewing the, the messages, we have uh, the read permission is required. So to read messages, the first thing that we do is get the authenticated user. This comes straight from convex auth and we get the user ID of the user that is currently authenticated. If there is, if this returns null, uh, it means that nobody's authenticated and we will just declare bankruptcy here and not continue, throw an error. The second thing that we do now that we have the user that's logged in is we check the permissions for that user. So here we call our check permission function. We pass it in the required level of permission. 
and the user ID, and this will run. It'll get the user and it'll compare the required uh, permission with the user's permission and let us know if that user has access to do this. If so, we can carry on, return all the messages. If not, we can throw an error and manage that in the client. Similarly with the send mutation, so this is called when somebody tries to send a message in our chat app. We do the exact same thing, except we pass in the required permission is right. And if they don't have permissions, it throws an error. Otherwise we carry on and insert the message into the database. Finally, we have the almighty powerful delete message. This is only available to admins. And so we do the exact same thing. So we check the permission. We say that this is admin only. If that user doesn't have these permissions, we can handle that error in the client. Otherwise we can carry on and delete the message. So this is role-based permissions with convex auth in its entirety. But let's take a look at the client to see exactly how we can take advantage of this. So in the client, I have our three convex functions. Uh, list messages, send message, delete message. I've also added the mutation for update role. Remember, this is just so that um, we can experiment with the experience of different permissions. Um, and then I have this new state for showing users an error if, for example, they try to do something for which they don't have permissions. So here we go handle submit. This is when we're sending a message. Uh, we send the message, we just, we just give it a go. Um, and if it returns an error, we can then show that to, uh, to the client on the front end. Same thing for delete. If there's a permissions error, we can show that to the client on the front end. And then here we have handle role change, which again is just so that we can experiment. Down here, we're gonna check the current user's permission. This is simply to show and hide different parts of the UI. Even if a user attempted to send uh, a change or a mutation through the console, um, the check permission on the server side would still prevent them from doing things that they're not supposed to do. So only admins should see the delete icon because it's only going to work for admins regardless of whether or not that icon is, uh, is visible. So we are able to show our error down here, and then we have a simple select for testing different roles. And when I update this, it's sending that mutation to convex and it's updating my role. And this is what we're checking um, to make sure that the user has permissions to do a certain thing. So if I try to send a message, even though I only have a read permission, Let's do this thing. This is gonna throw an error because I don't have permission to do so. So Convex is looking up the authenticated user, which is me. It's then looking up the role and it's comparing the role against the permission that I said was required to take this action. So we can go ahead and update this to write. My role in the database is now that of a writer. Okay, so hey everybody, how you doing? That works like a charm. Now I can switch this to read and I still get access to this because I'm able to read it. We could have uh, an additional permission that said, you know, no permissions or unpaid user or something like that. And if we gave that permission, we could set this up such that I wouldn't even be able to read this. So finally, let's add an admin uh, permission to my user. Hello, I'm the big boss, see? So as an admin, I'm able to do all of the things uh, below what the admin permission allows. So if an admin is sort of permission level two, it's the highest permission, it can do two and everything below it, which in this case is uh, delete, write, and read. And so as an admin, I can now delete these. Um, and in the UI, when I update my permissions, it gets rid of the little box. But even if we were to uh, kind of copy and reapply this 
uh, this post message to the server, it would fail because we're doing the check on the server side. And that is how we can add simple role-based permissions to convex auth. Happy coding.